Hey, I'm Matt, and this episode of No Dumb Questions is brought to you by HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service where really smart food people and dietitians put their brains together to design very good food, and they put together the ingredients, and they ship it to your house in an insulated box, and then you unpack the thing, and in there is a really easy to understand recipe card, and then you get to cook your food, which is surprisingly fun even for somebody who doesn't know much about how to cook food. The instructions are easy to follow, I know where everything's going, and it takes you know, less than half an hour to put the thing together, and it tastes good every time. In fact, I would say it tastes better because I'm actually invested in the process of making my food instead of just having my food happen to me. So you feel good after you eat it, you feel good putting it together. Each meal is like 10 bucks a pop top, so it's really reasonable. And it fits into your schedule really nicely. So if you haven't tried out HelloFresh yet, I really hope you'll give it a shot. Supporting them supports us. You can do that by going to HelloFresh.com and entering the promo code NDQ30. That'll get you 30 bucks off your first order. All right, let's get to the conversation. All right, man, you're in charge. Rock and fire. I feel like the last couple of episodes, we've, we've got super deep. And maybe a little self-important. <laughs> maybe at moments. <laughs> like we, had to figure, we had to figure out the, the point of human existence. I it's, think you're getting self-important right now, dude. <laughs> like right now, just back right. off. Just back off. Okay, so backing I, off. I just want to talk about something sciencey and simple. And I, mean, I don't even know if this is going to be like a, a short episode or what, but I just something cool happened, and I just want to talk about it with you. Tell so, me about it. Yeah, did you see the uh, the Domino video I did? I'm halfway through it. <laughs> Sorry, it's like a 10-minute <laughs> video, and I didn't watch the whole thing yet. <laughs> All right. It just occurred to me that uh, I have failed. Okay, well, cool. So you haven't seen the half that matters then that is pertinent to this discussion, so maybe that's a good Tell thing. Tell me about it. Yeah, it is a good thing. So I went to Detroit. There's these, these people. I say people because there's like, guys and gals from all over the world, mostly from Europe, a lot from the U.S., and they love dominoes. Like, when I say they love dominoes, it's like they're jam, you know? Have you ever loved anything like that? Yes, I've loved a lot of things like that. Most recently, fly fishing and tennis. Yeah, yeah. But dominoes, okay, there's these two, these two, <laughs> I, well, I'll just use their names, Lily and Steve. Okay. How old are Lily and Steve? Lily's like freshman in college-ish, and Steve is a little bit older than that. They really love dominoes. And so I wanted to go see this thing. It's called the Zeal Incredible Science Machine. Okay. And they have all these people from all over. They do a quarter million domino setup. That's the American record. Now, what do you think the European record is? Well, I assume it's worse because America <laughs> is big and awesome. No, man. There's all kind. Of, there's like... I think your mom visits Italy and listens at least once <laughs> once an episode. I think you're on to something. No, but what, what do you think the European record is? Uh, I don't know. They've been doing it longer. I, I don't know. You said a quarter million for America? Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, 500,000. 4.4 something million. Seriously? That's, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's I did like, an exercise one time when I was a kid where the teacher was like, if you started writing on a sheet of paper right now, it would take you until you're 28 years old to just write to a million. And I was like, yeah, forget that. I'm doing it. And for two nights I did. And then I figured out she's right. So 4.4. Really yeah. Yeah. I was going to bring it to her at the end of the year and be like, take that, <laughs> Mrs. Springer. And yeah, you, your uh, childhood sounds a lot like mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was, she was dead on. But 4.4 million, that's unfathomable. Do they have that's a machine a that of, sets them up? No. Well, so they have these little devices they make out of Legos, obviously. And so Not obviously. It, it's a gauge stick. I call it, okay, so Steve, Steve Price is this one guy's name. He has a YouTube channel called Sprice Machines, where he makes these little Rube Goldberg machines. Oh, cool. And so they make these gauge blocks out of Legos with the perfect spacing, and they just load them up with Legos, excuse me, load them up with dominoes, and then they push them into position, and it perfectly lines them up. It's how many, really how many cool. at a time? No, it's about 40, something like that. That's still a long time to get to 4.4 million. Yeah, I know. How many people were working on that? I think it was about two dozen, two dozen. And they worked a week. Actually, they did 1,512 hours worth of work to get a quarter million. <sighs> that's a lot. Wait, but, you know, that's for a quarter million. 
Yeah, but they were doing they were doing like fancy stuff. Like they were getting all artsy and doing neat, interesting setups. And so if you were just going for like the hardcore record, you would just obviously just set up these huge fields, right? Yeah, I suppose anyway, so. Here's this is what I want to talk about. Okay. So they did this thing at the end of this whole event where they started a timer and then the timer would knock over this big wall at zero. They counted down from 10 and they actually did a countdown like 10, nine. And then, you know, it, it's, you know, hits it at zero. And man, that really got me thinking, what is the speed of dominoes? Have you ever thought about that? Of course I haven't thought about that, but I'm excited to. Like, yeah. So, so, so what, how f- you're saying once they start knocking each other over, yeah, like miles per hour, how fast are they? Are they toppling in order? Basically, like what what things would determine the speed of a domino? And you haven't watched that part of the video yet? No, no joke. No, I, I no joke haven't because okay. apparently our friendship is on the rocks. Whatever. So, <laughs> okay. what things would you think would affect the speed of dominoes? Because okay, I figured I figured a lot of this out, and I think. I think I've figured things out that nobody knows about this yet. Okay, but I get to guess? Yeah. Okay, weight of the dominoes. Okay. Sharpness of the edges of the dominoes versus roundedness. Okay, that's pretty good. Weight distribution of the domino, whether it has that little bead in the middle or not. Bead um, in the middle. What do you mean by that? Well, don't some of the dominoes have like a little bead on the middle stripe of them? Oh, let's just, like the ones you let's actually just assume they're all... Let's just assume that it's like a a, a prism, like a, just a... A square looking thing, like a rectangle. So they don't use actual dominoes. That you can't play with these dominoes afterwards. They're just the shape. Correct. Okay, my bad. My bad. Scratch that one then. Uh okay. the surface you set them up on. I think that would affect okay. how quickly they would topple. Um okay. in what way? Go go deeper into that. Okay, because I assume there would be um there would be friction as the domino starts to slide out from under itself and fall forward. And what I do you suspect mean? that on well, okay, so the, when that domino falls, it's not just a clean flop forward, like a belly flop. I assume that it falls forward and the bottom slides back out underneath it a little bit as it falls. I could now, be why wrong. do you think that? Because of how other things fall when I knock them over or when my cat knocks them off of tables. Now, you haven't seen this video? You're, no. You're not, you're no, not I, sandbagging here. No, I've not seen this video. Sandbagging is against the rules. We've established that. Yeah, no, we have. Okay. I've definitely not. Why? Because am I getting something right? Yeah, you're getting something right. Keep going. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, I would say um, the presence or not presence of fans. Like, uh, you obviously we're assuming a still room, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, at first, I wanted to say how hard the first domino was flicked, but mm-hmm. I feel like that energy transfer would dissipate over the first several dominoes, and I bet there's a consistent rate at which they fall no matter how hard you hit the first one. So I'm not going to say how hard you hit the first one. Um, this is good, man. This is good. You're doing a good job. Really? Gosh, yeah, I you're feel doing a great, great job. about that. Thanks. Yeah, if this so, all turns out to be an elaborate ruse and I actually was wrong about everything, it's going to be a funny joke. That's all I can think no, of. No, no. I got nothing else. Well, okay, so I want to... Okay, so you're absolutely right. All the things that you talked about that matter, matter. Yes! But, but there's one thing that I'm I want to hone in on. I'm going to high-five the microphone. Yeah. And that sounded terrible. But in my heart, that was a <laughs> high-five. Okay, so let's let's dive into that friction piece. Because I, too, assumed all of these things. One thing you missed that... It, had you thought a little bit longer and I hadn't hit you cold with it, you would have... This, is, this one's obvious. Spacing between the dominoes. Oh, right? yeah. Duh. Duh. Yeah. That one's obvious. So uh, obvious enough that I didn't get it, but I thank you for the benefit of the doubt. Well, we'll think about it. Like if if you were to space them out further apart, would it be faster or slower? I would think it would be faster because that would be more time for gravity to act on the falling domino and it would accelerate. Well, it's it's actually slower for the same reason. You know, Nuts. you have to yeah, because, you know, gravity is 32 feet per second per second, or 9.8, one meter per second per second, that's however the, you want to think about it. That's the only actual number in physics that I know off the top of my head. 
Really? Yeah, that was it. You just exhausted all of my physics knowledge right there, and you said it, and I didn't get to. Great. Dude, I've been saving was... that since 10th grade physics <clears throat> for a moment where it might make me look cool at a party or something. It's all right. It was, it was always a like one thing I love to do in physics and chemistry is I like to memorize constants in like really weird units. I don't know why. Give me the I weirdest really unit you know the rate of acceleration of gravity in. Oh, gosh. Okay. I don't know many for that. Okay, so you got me. I mean, that's just 32. <laughs> okay, they, point they give me a weird one and something square. else. I don't know. Like, I like that light travels at one foot per nanosecond, thereabouts. Did not know that. Yeah. Or, what is, a, what is know, a nanosecond? Is that a nanosecond? A, is uh, I think it's one second times 10 to the minus. Uh, it's not micro. Yeah, it'd be microsecond oh. or times 10 to the minus nine. 10 to the minus 3 is millisecond. 10 to the minus 6 is microsecond. 10 to the minus 9 is nanosecond. And then Whoa. minus 12 is femtosecond. Whoa. Okay. And then I, you get down to attoseconds. That's a term I've misused my whole life. So that, that amount of time is not going to show up in the waveform. Nanosecond? Yeah, that's less than a blink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nanosecond, like light travels one foot per nanosecond. And so... Dang. Okay. I use high-speed cameras a lot. And so I think in terms of milliseconds and nanoseconds and microseconds and stuff like that. So... It's real, well, mostly microseconds and milliseconds. Anyway, we're down the rabbit hole. Let's get back to Domino's. That was a good one, though. Foot per nanosecond. Now I know. Yeah. So the thing is, the you know, as your as your fa- that domino is falling, it takes time for it to accelerate and get to the next one. So the quicker you can right. hit it, the less time it has to you know accelerate before it actually topples the next one. So you sp- in general terms if you spread out the dominoes it'll take longer for it to hit however okay because the get- benefit of the quick hit is greater than the benefit of the acceleration of gravity in terms of speed true but Got it. i i think there's a knee in the curve like i think if you start getting them closer and closer together for what i'm seeing in my data there's this sweet spot where they'll go really fast but if you get even closer they'll go slower i think that's what i'm seeing in the data i'm not done yet so well i it, it, i'm sorry i have to take a, a brief aside my brain tells me that the expression to use there is <clears throat> excuse me law of diminishing returns but you said a knee in the curve yeah you're right law of, the principle of diminishing returns yeah you're right a knee in the curve is something we say in engineering all the time where you like you plot things and you're like oh look there's a bendy part in the curve that must be the sweet spot and so we say a knee in the curve really yeah. So I'm, I'm stealing that. Thank you, engineer. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So so all that all that you're saying is right, but the friction thing. So I did this video on Smarter Every Day. I got out the high speed camera. Uh Steve, who I call Swagger Steve, sent me a swagger stick, which is his spacer thing. I call it a swagger stick because I think it's funny. <laughs> it's crazy. So, so Swagger Steve sent me a swagger stick and a, you know, I think it was bulkdominoes.com. Lily called them and they sent me a bunch of dominoes. And so I was thinking to myself, okay, I'm going to gonna set up this high-speed camera and unravel the mysteries of the universe, right? Did sure. not happen at all. What? I set this stuff up. But you have a high-speed camera. I do, but the problem is I only set up like 20 dominoes. And so what we found is that as you knock the first one over, they accelerate. So the first one is, you know, kind of slow to topple. And then they speed up. The more that fall down, they speed up. It's like this momentum somehow builds up and it gets to a terminal velocity where you have the speed of that particular domino setup based on mass, friction, spacing, all the things you mentioned. So every single domino setup has a specific speed that it will it will obtain and then maintain. And surely there's some kind of handbook for if you do these things, it will go at this rate. Right? So you can plan it all in advance? No, not at all. And so that's something that I wanted to... So they're guessing? They don't... Yeah. I mean, they just set it up, test it, and redo it is what they were doing. Right? And so for the particular setup they had, it was 60 dominoes equal one second. But things Hmm. like turning slows you down and stuff like that. But this is something I found interesting. Get back to the slipping domino that you were talking about. So... Can you just describe in your mind's eye what that looks like as one domino hits the next one? You mentioned that it was sliding out from under the bottom or something like that. Yeah, here's the here's why I intuit it to work that way. 
um, like if, if you set if you set a big box up, like an empty cardboard box, yeah, and you were to put a wine glass two inches behind the back of that cardboard box and tip it forward, even if it would, even if that would clear the wine glass, were the box affixed by a hinge to the ground when it fell forward, it will hit the wine glass in reality because it scoots back. And we, we, I just know, I mean, I know this from my own clumsiness. It's going to scoot back and kick back. It's going to knock over something behind it. So even though dominoes are smaller, I imagine when that falling happens, it reaches a point where the friction is so reduced on the contact point that it starts to scoot back because there isn't weight holding it against the ground anymore. That's how I see it. So so here's the deal. It, it slides like that before it hits the next domino. So, so in your mind, were you thinking it would slide after it hit the domino in front of it? It would depend on spacing. Yeah. Yeah, because in my scenario, the box isn't hitting anything in front of it. It just scoots back at a certain point. So imagine this in your mind's eye. Okay. If you if you were to set a domino upright and you were to thump the top of it really, really hard. Okay, on the fat side. On, on, yeah, on the fat side. You're going to thump the very top of it so that it flips over, right? Uh, it, you yeah. with me? That, that's, yes. That's where a domino is hit by the domino behind it, right? Uh, up top. Yeah. yeah. So it spins really... I may really, or may not be doing it right now. Yeah, so it spins okay. really fast. But... Because you're hitting it and putting so much force in the top, the inertia or the you know the resistance to motion because it has mass, instead of it just hinging over on that front corner, it's going to spin in position. Are you with me? So that flick that I'm doing right now, it's not a domino, but it's close enough, is causing a rotation. Yes. Not just a clean fall. It's rotating, so the bottom of the domino is kicking backwards out from under it. Right. And the top of the domino is falling forward and hitting the next one. I just need you to understand that, because th- this is a building block to a further point. Do you understand okay, that? Okay, So it is not pivoting side to side. It's only pivoting on that forward axis? Yes. It's only tilting okay. forward. You with okay, me? Okay, then I am tracking. Yes. So when it tilts forward, it's not just making contact with that forward bottom edge. It's also sliding backwards because it's rotating about its center of mass. You with me? Not side to side, but rotating forward. Correct. It's doing a front flip. Exactly. Got it. Fully okay. tracking. Okay, so this is what I discovered. If I if I let dominoes fall on a slick surface and I let dominoes fall on a frictional surface, the ones on the slick surface are going to rotate more. They're going to try to do a flip instead of just falling forward. And the ones on the frictional surface are just going to fall forward, right? Okay. So which one, which one do you think is going to go faster? Dominoes on a slick surface or dominoes on a frictional surface? Frictional surface, because more of the energy will be transferred forward and less will be squandered. That's exactly that what pivoting. I thought, but it's not the case. Okay, that's the most confident answer I've given in this whole conversation. Yeah, I, I know. Was positive. Yeah, on that. What I've discovered with a high speed camera, I think I have to redo all this testing because I didn't do enough of it. But I think I have discovered that the fact that it's rotating makes it flip forward faster and hit the domino in front of it faster. Just like you've got resist, huh. just like you've got resistance to change, like you know, we talked about the spacing. The further apart they're spaced, the further yeah. it has to fall. Yeah. For the same reason, one that's just flipping instead of falling all the way forward, it can flip faster than it can fall forward. Does that make sense? It can flip faster than it can fall. On yeah. a non-friction surface. Yeah. Or a low-friction surface. Here's a fancy, fancy, fancy way of saying it. Tell me the fancy way. The rotational moment of inertia is lower if you're pivoting about the center of the domino than if you're pivoting at the bottom edge. Oh. You got it? Okay. I I understood a couple of those multisyllabic words. So it has to do, it has to do with the pivot point. Yep. Not the contact with the ground below it. Yes. 
And every domino paper I have read, which is a lot of them, you go to Google Scholar, you search up speed of dominoes and stuff like that, like line two in every one of these papers is, we will assume the domino pivots forward from the forward edge. That's like line two of every one of these papers. And then they go into this huge math derivation, figuring out, you know, the math involved with a falling domino. And it's all bullcrap. So bull you're crap. about to rock the domino world. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for understanding that there yeah, was there's a mild sarcasm in that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just love the fact that we think we understand something in like line two of the papers that we're just going to make assumptions on. You know, it's not necessarily true. I love that. Dude, I get so excited about that. And so I'm I'm sitting in here in the garage the other night with Trent. He was wearing a goofy rainbow hat, by the way. You'll you'll see that when you watch the end of that video. And we're sitting there knocking over dominoes till five no, it was four AM in the morning. And he he had he was like, What are we doing? And I was like, We're unraveling the mysteries of the universe as it pertains to a simple prismatic block of plastic. And, like, the more we got going, the more we got into it, and we started doing weird stuff like high-fiving, and it was like, oh, my gosh, I understand it. And so we would put it on different frictional surfaces, and it wasn't until after after I put all of it together and was editing the video, because I basically gave up on understanding the physics for that video. It wasn't until the editing process that I was like, holy cow, look at what's happening, and I understood it. And I just wanted to share that with you. This is what, like, this is what a simple scientific discovery feels like and this is this this is the most simple thing in newtonian physics right but it's so uh, i don't know is it the most simple thing i don't i don't know i mean i'm i'm asking like super dumb questions how fast do dominoes fall that's a super dumb question but you can't answer that question without getting into things that do matter yeah I don't know. I, I just wanted to share that moment with you because I do these things and I make videos on the internet about them. But the reason I do them is because I want to know. And I, I think I figured something out that's really neat. That's the gold standard, man. What do you mean? I mean, it's just really gratifying when you figure out something for yourself through your own work in your discipline or whatever you're into. And you realize, hey, nobody's connected this dot yet. And it's not like the thing that changes the world the same way that rotational physics on a domino is not the thing that changes the world. <laughs> this but is going to change the world, let me tell you. <laughs> because I figured, you think this is the thing? You think this will finally bring us together in unity you, and you harmony? Know what, you know what this reminds me of? It tell reminds me. me of the moment in Back to the Future 3. I already like your example. Where uh, Marty McFly, you know, gets the Frisbee pies plate yes yes you, you know what i mean i don't know have you ever invented something in your mind like and you invented it and you were very proud of it and then you later figured out that somebody else had invented it i i used to be in a band and we played music in front of people because i thought that was a good idea mm -hmm. and i wrote a lot of songs i wrote one one day and i was like this is this is like the best thing i've ever written this cadence is powerful the ideas are powerful i can hear the melody I, it just happened. It came together into focus and I got the guys together. I was like, guys, listen to this. And I got out my acoustic guitar that you play to impress girls at campfires. And I started playing it. And some, and one of the dudes started laughing at me. And I was like, I'm bearing my soul to you. This is, I just told you, this is the best thing I've ever written. He's like, uh, that's a huge hit by Coldplay. <laughs> what? <laughs> ah, crap. Was it really? Yeah, it was. Like, like you, you had heard it somewhere subconsciously? Whatever that one is. I just yeah. wrote it, but with my own words and on an acoustic guitar. And I genuinely, in my heart, believed that I had just created powerful, meaningful art that the world was going to love. And they do. It's just that Chris Martin thought of it first. So I, uh, I invented a hole saw. So I was like, you know, what if you had a saw blade but you rotated it around in a circle, like on the end of a drill, and you could you could saw holes with it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you figured out Coldplay already invented that? Yeah, hole saws. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> and when, what was your epiphany moment? Well, when I saw a hole saw in the store, and I'm like, oh, wow, 
I'm not that smart. <laughs> what are we doing with the the spaces we have here on the back catalog where there were ads before? Um. Well, I think since we we no longer work with a lot of these sponsors and. I don't know, the landscape has changed. I think we tell people about Patreon. I think that makes a ton of sense. And I mean, for the most part, all of our interactions with the sponsors have been pleasant enough. Yeah, you, know, you do business for a while, it's great. You like what their product is, but just time changes and their campaigns end. And then we got these spots just sitting here in the back catalog that are no longer relevant and the offers don't stand anymore. But the thing that lasts is the relationship, it's the patrons, it's the patron thing. It makes sense that we would do that. Absolutely, absolutely. And if people would like to sponsor, we would be grateful. Patreon.com slash no questions, right? I like that language. I haven't heard you use that before, I don't think. If people would like to sponsor. Yeah. Like assume the role of some of the companies we've worked with that sponsor the program. Because here's the thing, we never have to go back through the back catalog and replace this conversation you and I are having right now because it will always be relevant. It will. It will. So the fact that patrons support Notum Questions is a big, big, big deal because we can just do what we want. And we don't we don't care about what anybody <laughs> thinks. We can we can just have awful conversations. <laughs> so to help enable our narcissism and allow us to do whatever we want, please consider going. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Patreon.com slash no dumb questions. Okay, Destin, I'm on the subreddit and Which one? We... There's two now. Oh yeah, you caught me. Okay, I'm on the fancy new one where we welcome any content that anybody wants to submit. So that's R slash N D Q. Yep. And we're doing a thing on there where we have flair. And as we peruse that, if either of us like a question, we can tag it picked by Destin or picked by Matt. And that means we're going to talk about it on an episode. Can I throw you the question that you already picked? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, it has to do with exactly this subject. Why did you finally decide to switch the Reddit, Destin? So I parked in DQ back in the day thinking we might use it for something. And turns out we we opened the floodgates on r slash no dumb questions. And that's where we let people talk about whatever in the episode itself. But when floodgates we opened it... Floodgates is the right expression. Yeah, because everybody just came into the subreddit. They thought it was very similar to No Stupid Questions, which is a very large subreddit. And so people would ask whatever. And so I had to lock it back down because everybody in there was saying, hey, dude, what are you going to do? Are you going to moderate this or what? And so we decided to lock down No Dumb Questions, and then we start in DQ. And there's a lot of really cool stuff in there right now. Like I'm seeing all kinds of questions in here and uh, also suggestions for new books and all kinds of stuff. And I hope people do that, by the way. I would love people to, you know, upvote a book that they really think is a good idea. I'm seeing Flatland right here, Failure is Not an Option, Seven Eves, uh, Hidden Figures. I'm seeing a lot of people that have really good book suggestions. So anyway. Yeah. And please. right now I got I, I have my hand in my ear and I'm holding my elbow with my one hand and I'm making this sound. That means, ooh, 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 I got what? something. <laughs> Here's that? what I want to say about the subreddit. I, this has required no moderation. Yeah. Huge props to everyone who participates in that for not being crappy. <laughs> Seriously, people yeah. are really good at disagreeing on there and and not disagreeing. Like, people have treated each other well. So even though people were flooding it with questions that don't make any sense or don't pertain, it, like, the only reason we made the change is because it was just muddying the waters of what we actually needed to talk about and what not. So thank you for not needing to be moderated because... We don't want to. We'd rather hang out as peers and throw out ideas. So nice job. Props to you. I, I got six minutes hand. before I have to go pick a kid up at a baseball game. So we got we got to bang some more questions out real quick. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. I uh, got another one. This is the one that I tagged. What's that? Um, <clears throat> it's going to have to be the quick version. What is the biggest thing we both disagree on? So let me phrase it this way. What is the thing you think you disagree with me most about? It's okay to put things on the dash of the car as you oh, drive. Oh, for crying out loud. That is not negotiable. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no. This isn't a point of disagreement. It's a point of, it's a character flaw on your part. Whatever, dude. It's an aspect of who you are as a man in which you need to mature and change. Am I right? It is dangerous and wrong and I'm, uncivilized. I've got You're five minutes so left wrong. before I have to pick a kid up. What do, what do you think we disagree <laughs> Don't on? You, don't you put anything on the dash while you do it. Crap slides around on the dash and you don't focus on driving. We're also, our views on government. We don't agree on our views on government. I work for the government. 
And yeah, I you, don't. You wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, probably not. We yeah. both think there should be a government. I'm not an anarchist. I just, I generally am a live and let live guy, and you generally are a make rockets for the government guy. That's right. Well, I mean, you know, there's a nuance to what I do. It's a little different. I know. Than that. <laughs> and yeah. you understand. And you understand my playful jab as being nothing more than that. Yeah. Okay. So, what do you think we disagree on? I think we disagree on downtime. Oh, dude. I really think that pacing stuff out and taking your time and fishing most days is really important to brain health. And I think you see that different than me. I think I'm just a workaholic, Matt. I mean, I don't think there's, I have no excuse. Well, you, I mean, you get a ton done and it's good and you're a good dad I don't, and I don't a good husband. We, so I don't think we disagree on that. I think that, I think you have the right position on that and I have the wrong position on that. Just like you have the wrong position on it being okay if I have stuff on the dash. <laughs> I knew right where you were going. <laughs> you suck. Oh, man, this is great. All right. So All right, what, we got to go pick question? up kids. I got a soccer game. You got baseball. Oh, wait, wait, we got oh, two done. Let's let's call it good. We're going to call it good? This was fun. A short episode. I, I say we do this more often, dude. Happy dadding, man. Yeah, you too, buddy. Catch you soon. Later. Thank you.